Welcome back everybody, it's OG here, and I have an update. I built another VTOL aircraft. Not from scratch, I modified the one I made for the first video. The one that didn't V in VTOL. It, it could only go forwards, it couldn't go up. But I fixed that, let me show you. Here we are on the runway, ready to get going. Test all the flaps and ailerons and elevators and things. And then I enable the small thrusters under the wingtips using the RCS control. And those are normal spaceship RCS thrusters, the Methalox variety. And those are what keep me level in flight. Open the door for the lifting fan, F-35 style. Fire up the engines. The rear lifting engines just fire 100% all the time. And then that front lifting one, which is an aero spike, I throttle it in order to control the pitch of the aircraft. And this was my second time flying the plane. I had flown it once briefly before. And it flew first time. And the second time I operated it here in this video, it flew again perfectly. So my eyeballing of where exactly to position these engines and how many engines to put at the back that worked out well so as you can see it lifts off very nicely and then you fire up the main engines and you start the transition into level flight fire up the afterburners and then Retract the wheels and shut down the lift engines and close the door. Once it gets a bit more speed, then I start up the scramjet as well. Just for fun. In testing before I put the lift engines in, it it flies really well on that uh, scramjet engine. This plane is not extremely maneuverable, so I turned down the control authority and I modified the wings quite a bit because it had this really nasty habit of going into an uncontrolled series of flips if you use too much elevator control. So I'm taking it here on a little test flight around the buildings to see just how bad or good the maneuverability is. No, there's no way I'm going to try and fly this one under arches and bridges and things. But as you'll see, it's not too bad. Yeah, I should have been flying it on the other engines, but I didn't. Having that aero spike underneath, you could do some really cool maneuvers if you just pop that on and off all the time. You could go from super maneuverability to super duper maneuverability. Something military air designers should keep in mind. And if they build a plane like that, I want my commission. So there's the lift engines back on now. And yes, I did turn them on slightly before opening the doors. And then I kill the forwards motion engine and I try and come in to land. Now I always knew that landing was going to be the tricky part. Getting up is easy. Getting down... Well, you're always going to get down. It's just a matter of getting down safely or not. But no worries. I had Bob at the controls. Bob is skilled very experienced Kerbal pilot so I knew if anyone could do it Bob could do it unfortunately Bob's parents were farmers and for that reason it doesn't seem that Bob likes tar very much 
and Bob wanted to go off into the grass all the time. At this low speed it's very hard to correct that, so I gave Bob a stern talking to, demoted him, and then he slowly started making his way back to the runway, rather begrudgingly. I found it quite difficult to slow this plane down and descend at the same time because you've got a couple of mutually exclusive goals with regards to thrust and pitch not entirely mutually exclusive but it, it is tricky and it's quite a juggle also being that KSP's controls are not really typically suited to aircraft and then Bob comes in for a nice soft touchdown and explodes because this is still KSP and glitches beautifully because this is KSP 2 but that's what happened I promised you a VTOL update and here it is I'm happy with that I'm going to stop building VTOLs for now I have many other things on my list of things to do Maybe one day I'll come back to it again, but for now, I'm happy. OG, out.